Hmm. Let's see. I could talk about how the systematic denial of freedom to African Americans has been tied up in both slavery and the prison system, and how the prison system could actually be worse than slavery, seeing as though there's more African Americans in prison today than were enslaved in 1850, largely due to the 13th Amendment, which literally says slavery should not exist except as punishment for a crime whereof the party had been duly convicted. Or I could just talk about the movie. You know what I hate? Injustice. Yes, that too. Oh, and since we're here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for your boy. Let's just make it official. Anyway, you know what I hate? When I'm watching a movie or a TV show and I see something that's supposed to be normal, like a hug or a freaking handshake or people just outside, and it looks weird to me. It's just scary. Like, this new normal has become too normal, too fast. Who wants to watch TV like this? Like, oh my. This must be old. They're outside with no face mask. It's gross. It's like watching Home Alone 2. These folks wake up like 13 minutes before their flight, zips through one of the busiest airports in the whole world, and everyone just gets on board the plane. Well, almost everyone. The point is, we watch that now and we're like, nope, y'all wake up that late, TSA gonna bring you right back down to reality. Which I guess will be good news for Kevin. Hmm. Silver lining. Sorry for the tangent. I don't know if y'all feel like that too, but it's been weighing heavy on my heart. All right, let's see here. I've been trying to give Amazon and Hulu a chance, but it's like Netflix is on pure Rona mode. It's like they knew we needed this. I know I said it in another video, but let's give it up for Netflix, y'all. If we want to beat coronavirus, it's really just three things. Social distancing, hand sanitizer, and Netflix. And depending on the day, hand sanity might slip. Anyway, today we have the Netflix original movie, All Day and a Night. Let's get into some background. All Day and a Night was written and directed by Joe Robert Cole. He worked on The People vs. O.J. Simpson. That's the one with Cuba Gooding Jr. That was fire. He actually got nominated for an Emmy off that thing. He actually co-wrote a movie I might have heard of called Black Panther. Yeah, big deal alert. This movie stars Ashton Sanders, most famously known for Moonlight. But quick sidebar, look how they did my doll Wikipedia page. They couldn't find no better picture than that. It's like the picture the police use on Crime Stoppers. Like, obviously my dude is into fashion and modeling. Boom, boom, boom. All right, sometimes we just take it a little too far, don't we? Anyway, they freaking use a paparazzi pic for my dude. It's a cold world, because people need to get on that. You do got people, right? You need people? Also, why does the cover for this movie look so familiar? Yeah, they just remixed the Moonlight cover. Like, how good do they think this nigga looks under fluorescent lighting? Anyway, this movie also stars Jeffrey Wright. He's in a whole bunch of shit, like Hunger Games, Shaft, Westworld. Also, fun fact, he'll be playing Commissioner Gordon in the new Batman movie. Comes out next year. Hopefully. Another random note, the music in this movie was actually run by Michael Abels. Who the hell is that, you may ask? Oh, no big deal. Just the guy that did the music for Get Out and Us. No, 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 not tonight. Okay, plot time. No spoilers though. All the shit is in the commercial. Relax. So this movie revolves around Ashton Sanders' character. That's Jacor Lincoln. He's a dude that grew up in a real tough situation out in Oakland, California. Shout out to the town. He grew up with both parents, but his dad was wilding out, being super abusive with Jacor's mom and Jacor, trying to teach him how to be tough and survive the streets. Jacor's dad ends up getting caught up with drugs and winds up in prison for murder. I'll tell you, he'd be wilding out. So the movie starts out at night. You see Jacor just chilling in his car, rapping a verse of his own music. He soon gets out with two guns, makes his way to someone's house, and he then finds a dude, his lady, and their 10-year-old. Fast forward, and Jacor kills both parents right in front of that kid, but you have no idea why. Fast forward again to court, where Jacor is sentenced to be in the same prison where his father's at. Then, the movie really starts and begins to tell you the story of how we got here. Not bad. So what's my take? This is a hood movie. This is a good movie. We really haven't had a lot of boys in the hood type movies lately, especially coming from Netflix. So they definitely got their street cred up. You definitely get that real Bay Area feel. The director's actually from out there, so he was sure to capture that energy. Even the musical director I mentioned, he went to college in Cali, 
so you know the music was right. The acting was legit. Everyone was believable. In fact, the only thing that wasn't believable was Jeffrey Wright's braids. But besides that, we was good to go. One problem I had with the film was following the timeline, because it doesn't tell the story in order, more so jumps back and forth. Kind of like This Is Us. But with This Is Us, you got seasons and seasons to learn about the characters. But this is just one movie, so if you jump around too much, you kind of miss out on that development. I get the style they were going for, but to be honest, I just got lost sometimes. Also, the film shows Jokor and his friends as kids, and then later as grown-ups. And I don't know if it was just me, but it took a long time for me to figure out who was who when they got older. There's a part of me that thinks maybe the movie would have been better off just telling the story linearly. Linear, linearly? 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 In order. Still keeping the same opening scene, but just working from childhood to adulthood in sequence. But the director is a director. That's their art. I take it as you give it. Hmm. So I'm going to give All Day and Tonight 3.5 stars. Now, some people are going to argue that we don't need to see this type of content portrayed on screen because we see it enough on the news. But I would argue that's part of the beauty in it. These are real stories. And as long as you tell it in a creative way, I say, do your thing. There's definitely a space for this movie on Netflix, but it's a tough line to balance on. Mixing real street content, but also making it smart and introspective. So good on you, Joe Robert Cole. Good on you. As always, thanks for checking out Tate's Take. Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite hood movie? I'm going to start it off. So I'll meet y'all in the comments. Thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.